Taylor and welcome back to the Taylor Louise Budgets channel. Now, this is the video that some of you have been really waiting for. I have been asked time and time again, how do you do this system? Through Instagram DMs, I have sent voice messages, big paragraphs of text explaining to people how this system works, how they can start out because I am about 18 months into doing this. So it has changed a lot for me and I have made things more complicated than they need to be because this is my hobby. I find budgeting so freaking fun. I I have no words for it. So this video is going to be a beginner's budget part one. I'm going to do a little bit of a mini series going through the process of zero based budgeting, how I cash stuff, what different ways to spend, how to organize your categories within your budget. What is a sinking fund? What are variable expenses? The works. I am also going to have another video breaking down my target bills tracker method and how you as an individual can get ahead of your bills and give yourself that peace of mind. So if you're interested in that, follow along, see how we go. I am going to be working through how I am preparing to cash stuff my 23rd of August paycheck, my second salary paycheck for the month. I get paid every two weeks. And so we're going to work out how do I actually set myself up to be able to take the cash out of the bank and put it in the envelopes and spend it. So let's go. Alrighty, I have broken this down into steps and I've been a little bit prepared. I hope that I don't talk too fast. I'm going to try to talk slower in this video than my usual videos because I know I'm a speedy Gonzalez out here. <laughs> okay, so the process. Step number one. I know that if you watch my videos, some of this might seem a bit redundant. You're familiar with the system. You probably cashed up yourself, but there are a lot of people that don't understand. So if that's not you, skip to the next video. I won't be drafting out my budget every week. So just skip to the next video. It will be my cash stuffing. So the paycheck budget. I have a draft here. I never start filming a video and have money out of the bank and go, oh, whoop, where am I going to put everything? So this page, this sheet that you can see is there is a blank version where you can fill in your own and it is on my Etsy store. So Taylor Louise budgets. I've broken it down into income, notes that you might need, expenses, sinking funds, savings and challenges. So there is a version of this for you up on my Etsy store if you want it. However, as you can see, I have already drafted. I've already prepared a draft because before I even get paid, I want to know what I'm going to do with that money. I don't want that money to land in my account and I go, whoop de doo here I go, here I go, spending, I got two grand, woohoo! No, I need to know where every cent is going prior to that money hitting my bank account. All right. I'm also a little bit OCD and like to do things a lot and redo it and redo it and make sure it's perfect. You can see that these versions are slightly different because I have some categories here that I no longer use. And this is my simplified version of the categories that I have in my envelopes now. So I'm going to put this one off the screen and I'm going to show you how I double check my budget and how I draft my budget. So step numero uno. Step one for this is to, I'm going to get a clipboard. So as I said, this is for the paycheck that is going to land in my bank on the 23rd of August. And I know that the other one was a draft, so I'm gonna write number two. So I know that it's a version two of what I'm gonna do with this money. Now, income. I separate out any money that I earn as like a side hustle. I separate out, I keep a running tally, and then when I have enough to warrant doing a cash stuffing, I put it all together. But so for my regular cash stuffings, I just do my salary which at the moment is $2,205 a fortnight. So that's gonna be the total amount of money that we are working with today. And I like to color code things, keep things nice and clear so I know what's happening. And income is always in green. So there we go, that's all the income that we're working with today. And then we are going to move along to my different sections. So I will have a separate video kind of breaking down different categories, how I use the different sections of the sheets, how I organize a semi-permanent budget, but that's not today. So I'm just going to go ahead and color code all of my sections. And again, I will explain those in another video. All 
Alrighty, now that I have categorized those to my liking, and like I said, I'll explain that in another video, how I do it, how I break it down, and why each section is each color, etc. But it just helps me when I'm working out how much to put in each section, because I do work on a semi-permanent budget, whereby I have a certain amount that I put into each category, each paycheck. Step number two is draft budget. So this is the longest section. This is the section where I work out how much money I'm going to put in each envelope. Sometimes that looks like me pulling each binder out, looking at and counting how much is in budgeting because if there is something I want to buy and I need more in the budgeting folder I might go oh there's only ten dollars in there okay I need to make sure that I put twenty dollars in there today uh gamble nothing no I'm gambles well stocked I don't need to put anything in there how do oh I'd really like to color off one of those okay I'll put five dollars in there today etc some of them get the same amount every week and some of them are a little bit variable where it does change each paycheck depending on how much money I have to work with but I fill out this section of the drafting the budget section in order of importance most of the time or where I know or what I know has to happen. For example, Target Bills at the moment always gets $1,100. So I know off the bat $1,100 is going to go to Target Bills. I also know that this section here is going to get $450. So it doesn't matter what I put in each there for now. I know that the total of this section is going to be $450 because that's how much I budget to spend on my variable expenses. I know that I don't stuff Tato with my paycheck. It's always rollover if it gets anything. I know that I like to put $5 to tattoo. I like to put... Oh, I like to put... Oops, that's the wrong one. 100 to travel, 20 to tech. Always put five to future and invest and also giving. They are just what I do every time. I know that Christmas has to be a minimum of 10. I know that IOG has to be a minimum of 40 because of the tracker. I'm not going to be transferring home, car or annual in digital. So you can see my little note here. I always put an asterisk next to the categories that are all digital money because I know that the, I know then when I'm adding up how much cash I need that I don't need to get cash out for those amounts because it'll be left in my account. I'm already talking too fast, aren't I? <laughs> Alrighty. So I know that I will put about let's go $250 to saving challenges yeah how you fill yours out is going to be different me going through how I make what decisions I make here is not going to help you with your budget because you have different priorities to me so I might zoom ahead and I will actually just fill this out to my own liking So I've added that up and I've made sure that 450 is the total of this section, which it is. And you can see that I made some decisions. I changed my mind on a few things. This budget looks different to my draft budget. I changed where things were going to go and then I changed my mind again and changed it back. It doesn't have to look pretty and perfect. This is a working budget. This is how I'm spending my money. So making the right decision at the end of the day is more important than this sheet of paper that I'm going to throw out in the end being clean. Moving along. Okay, so the only thing I'm not going to fill out on screen is what I'm going to put in my challenges because I want that to be a surprise when I film my cash stuffing video for my challenges. But I do need to double check that I budgeted the right amount of money. So I've got 2205 was what I got paid. Then 1100 is going to target bills. 450 is going to variable expenses. 190 to general sinking funds. 190 to priority savings. 25 to emergency fund and 252 savings challenges, leaving me with a zero based budget. So that's what I want. At the end of this sheet, I want that number to be zero. I want every dollar to be accounted for. If it said three, if there was three dollars left, what I would have done is I would have written three in cushion, which means that I would have left $3 in my bank just to cover those odd expenses. I don't know about, I need to buy a water bottle. Oh, it's okay. It's okay that dining doesn't have any money left. I'm just going to Chuck that $3 on my card and it can be eaten up by the cushion. The the cushion, the it's going to catch me when I fall, when I go over budget. There's a little bit of extra money in my account to save me on a bad day. <laughs> okay, that is step two, drafting the budget. Then we need to work out what notes I need. So that's why we have this little section up here. 
which actually looks at, okay, if I was pulling this out in cash, what notes do I actually need? What denominations of notes do I need to get out from the bank to be able to cash stuff? I will always work out my target bills separately because that is a completely different video and that's a big number and a lot of that actually is placeholders rather than cash. So I work out that one separately. All of these ones with an asterisk, I don't have to get out as cash because they are digital transfers. I transfer the money from my bank, but all of these ones here, I will get out as cash. So I'm going to go through now and work out, okay, so $80 in Tay, so I could go 50, 20 and a 10, but I'll probably just go 420. So I'll work it out based on what's going to be easiest to spend. Groceries, I'll do in 50s. Dining, I'll go 50, 100, 20, 40, 50. Fuel can be a $50 note. Beauty can be a $50 note. Miscellaneous will be a 20, etc. So that that is this section. And I'm going to go through and do the same with these two sections here and the amounts that I'm going to use for my challenges. So now that that part's done, I need to know how much I need of each note. So I need 10, 12, this is just for my cash stuffing, 16 and 11. So that's how many I need. How much money is that in total? I will work that out as well. I know that five times 10 is gonna be $50 in fives. We're gonna need 120 in tens. We're gonna need 320 in 20s and 550 in 50s. So altogether, the amount of cash that I need to get out or that I need to have is $1,040. And again, I work out my target bills amounts completely separately. So that isn't going to be in this video. Okie dokie. So that is part three. That is step three of the process is working out what notes I need and how many of each note I need. That moves us on to step four, which is actually to accumulate that money. Work out, okay, so if I've been spending money in cash or if I've been spending money digitally, how much do I have in my back to bank fund? Because occasionally you will have a back to bank fund or money that needs to go back to the bank, especially if you use placeholders and things like that. So at the end of every fortnight, before I actually go to the bank and get the money out for this, I look at how much money do I have in here? And keep in mind for this video that I actually have already been to the bank. So <laughs> some of this money I would, I would not necessarily have this much money in my back to bank fund usually. So just keep that in mind. I work out how much money is in my back to bank to work out how much more money I might need from the bank if I was to do a bank trip or a trip to the ATM, etc. And then that way I can work out what, I, what do I need of each denomination as well. So it's all well and good to say, oh, sweet, I've got $1,100 here, so I've got enough money. But if I only have two fives and I need a 10 to separate this out correctly, I'm still going to need to go to the bank to swap those denominations over. And you just go to a bank teller. I know that somewhere near me, there is actually an ATM where I can put $50 notes in and select how many 20s, 10s and 5s I want. But I know that that isn't common. So you might need to go to a bank teller to get out the right amounts. I know some people have really cute little slips and I have some, but not on me, um, really cute little slips where they fill out just how many they want in fives, tens, twenties, fifties, etc. My bank doesn't accept those. I actually have been given a whole pad that I have to fill out a page of every time and go in with the piece of paper. I wish I could do it the pretty way, the fun way, but that's not the case for me, but that's okay. It's still really easy once you follow the steps correctly. Alrighty, so if this was the money that was in my back to bank fund, I can cross check it with how much I know that I need based on this tracker here. So this says that I need five tens. So, oh, sorry, <laughs> I need 10 fives. So how many did I have in my back to bank fund? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect, I had the right amount. Usually you will need to get some from the bank. Usually that won't be the case that you have the perfect amount there. Like I said, I have already been to the bank and gotten some extra cash out. So this is thicker than it would normally be. Tens, I need 12 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven of them, which means I know that I need five more. So I need five more tens. Then how many 20s do I have? I need 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I have 11, which means that I need another 5. 
How many 50s do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which means I need two more to make up the right amount. So that is where I would go to the bank and then magically reappear with excess money. Dun, 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 dun. There is extra money in here because I have gotten enough money out to do my target bill stuffing and stuff as well that isn't being focused on in this video. But I needed no five so they can go back to my bank envelope. I need one, two, three, four, five tens. And the rest can go to my next video. I need one, two, three, four, five twenties and the rest can go to my next video. <laughs> and... I need just two fifties and the rest can go away as well. Another reason why I have so much excess cash today is actually because I filmed an unstuffing video just before filming this one. So there was like $900 or something that I needed to take back to the bank, but I had already been to the bank to get out money to do this stuffing. So again, like I said, it's a little bit messy when you've been using this system for a while because you do multiple things at once. But if you just focus on the steps that I've outlined today, you'll be fine. <laughs> Okay, now I can confirm that I have 11, oh, sorry, that I have $1,040. So we're going to add it up. We have 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 50. We have 20, 40, 60, 81, 20, 40, 60, 82, 20, 40, 60, 83, 20. We have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 1, 10, 20. And we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. $1,040. So that is the perfect amount. That is exactly what I need to film my cash stuffing video. So step four was making sure that I now had the right notes. So that is doing the bank trip, making sure that you have the right amount of money. Step five is finalizing any budget changes. So usually between tracking your income, drafting your budget and getting out money from the bank, a couple of days might pass and that might mean that something changes in your life and that might mean that this budget needs to change. So step five is just to do one more quick glance over. Obviously, I've done this today, so I don't need to check it. But if there have been a couple of days between, nothing is stopping you from going, oh, actually, I just got this thing in the mail and that means that I can't give myself this much spending this fortnight or you know what, I just got an extra bill and so some of this sinking fund money is all going to need to go towards that bill or go towards uh, this event or something that's popped up out of the blue that needs extra money. Or, oh damn it, I need to buy my cousin a gift and I didn't have any money in that gift fund so I'm going to pull out of apparel and beautify and put that extra money in gift. You can make final changes to your budget if you need to. So that is step five. Number six is my favorite and that is cash stuffing or filming. So putting this money into your wallet and your sinking fund envelopes. Your envelopes might not look like this. Your envelopes might look like this. They might be white paper. Obviously this is just a Cara cash slip, but it could be white paper folded over and you go, oh, ah, food. It might be scrawl on a piece of paper, but if that money goes in here, you know that the money in here is for food. It doesn't have to look fancy. You don't have to spend the money on all the tools. Like I said, this is my hobby. This is fun for me. So a lot of my personal spending money, self-care money goes towards this stuff, but you don't need this stuff. You really don't. Alrighty. So obviously I'm going to cash stuff in a separate video. However, I wanted to go through step seven and that is ways to spend. So imagine this money is in this envelope and there is a little bit of excess money in this envelope from last fortnight, which I would normally pull out before I put more money in. But I wanna talk about ways to spend. So $80 is going in my Tay envelope. I have a few options of how I spend money and I'm just going to use the one envelope as the example. Step seven is to spend the money and track your expenses. So people do this in different ways, but I'm going to talk you through a few. Some people use cash and this is my variable wallet, which would mean that whatever I have in my wallet, I might just spend that cash. So this is taste spending. So just money that I want to spend on myself, like my splurge money for the fortnight. Groceries. If I go down and buy bread and milk, I'll use cash and I'll pay cash and I'll get change. That is one option. You can have money in your wallet that you spend as cash 
And then you could have your sinking funds that might be in other envelopes and you might go, oh, I'm going to go down to the shop and buy my partner a gift. So I'm just going to pull out this envelope and I'm going to chuck it in my wallet. And when I get there, I'm going to spend cash out of this envelope. That is how I started. When I started this system, I really needed to see the money leaving the envelope. So that is option A. 7A is to spend everything in cash, variable and sinking fund money in cash. Option B is to spend your wallet money, your variable expense money in cash but you're sinking funds as digital. So if you have some money in your account to use as some sort of a buffer or a cushion, you might be able to go, okay, I'm going to go to the groceries. I'm going to spend cash. However, when I buy my son a gift, I'm going to have to spend that on my card. And then when I come home, what I'll do is I'll actually take that out of the correct envelope, gift envelope, for example. So you might spend your money on your card, when it comes to sinking funds, but then spend everything else in cash in your variable. Option C, which is what I have been doing lately, and again, I'm 18 months into this, so I, I can track my expenses well enough to be able to do this, but I spend my variable money digitally and my sinking fund money digitally. So if you are someone that goes, oh, but I just don't want to carry that much cash around, then don't. A lot of the time, what I do is I pull out my card and I go to the shops with my card, or you know, I've got Apple Pay on my phone, and I'll pay for things digitally. And then in my phone notes, I have a list of what I've spent. And then as you would have seen, if you've seen my last video, every now and then, every week, two weeks, however often you need to do it, depending on how much money you have in your account as a buffer, I go through and I pull the money out. I go, okay, so how much have I spent on myself in the last week? Okay, I'll pull out $40, because if that's what I've spent, I've spent about $40 on myself. How much have I spent on groceries? Oh, I've spent 70 bucks, great, I'll pull that out. It can get a little bit confusing if you do it this way, if you go over budget. However, I kind of show you how I worked that out in my last video. So if you want to know more about that, go check out my last video. For 7C, if you want to spend everything digitally and then just unstuff and take the money out of the envelopes. It might feel a bit over the top or a bit double dippy, but by pulling the money out of the envelopes, I still feel the consequences of my spending. I still get to check in and know that I'm on track or off track. I've been spending too much money here, too much money there or I'm well prepped to buy gifts for people for their upcoming birthdays. I still find benefit from having the cash, even if I spend the money digitally. I personally have started going over budget a bit again, so I do need to get my crap together <laughs> and start spending cash again. But the problem really is just that I'm such a note snob that when I spend cash, if I then go to the bank, I don't get this many good new 20s. <laughs> that is honestly the main reason I don't spend cash anymore is because I'm such a note snob that I want to reuse the new notes and I it hurts my soul to go to the shop and have to hand over new 20s. <laughs> I'm going to show you an example of that because it is so true. Here I have $20 in miscellaneous. This is not money to spend on miscellaneous things. This is just because I got an old 20 and I don't want to spend it. I want to send it back to the bank or when I do have to spend cash, for instance, I might you spend this $20 and count as digital. If you don't understand that, don't worry about it. That's just me being a note snob and me explaining it for some long-term followers. However, to be able to do that, to be able to spend everything digitally, you really need to have a decent buffer or cushion. Um, if you Again, if you've been following me for a while, you would know that I did a challenge trying to get my cushion up to $1,000. And getting my cushion up to $1,000 and having extra money in there for bills that are going to come out next month has meant that there's always enough money in my account that I can pull money out and get the cash out even before I get paid and know that it's going to be fine. But that was a slow process. I was definitely having to play the field for a while in terms of making sure that I get money out on the right days when I wasn't going to leave myself broke or have a bill come out and there'd be zero dollars in my account just because I have so much cash on hand. So it is a process working that up. I recommend building a cushion and it works a little bit, building a cushion or a buffer works a little bit like an emergency fund. I know Caracash has some trackers for build a buffer as well. It is just so important to have that little bit of extra buffer money. And then that way, if you do overspend on groceries because of inflation, you've got that money there that it can sink and drown and die. <laughs> and that would just mean working a cushion amount into your paycheck every, every week or every paycheck until 
you have that at a decent point. I will continue to put little bits and pieces to my cushion to make sure that it stays healthy and that I always have spare money just in my account. So that is on building a cushion. That is step seven. And that is the end of my beginner's budget part one kind of mini series. Again, my second part to this will be on categories and actually setting up a semi-permanent budget, working out how to actually decide what goes in what categories. And then there will be a part three on prepping ahead for bills. But however, my next video will be cash stuffing of this money because this is my paycheck for the 23rd of August money sitting right here and it needs to go in these envelopes for next week. So I hope you did enjoy this video. Let me know down below if you enjoyed it, if it helped you, if you're excited for beginner's budget part two and part three. I am a teacher, so I have talked a lot <laughs> over explaining this, I'm sure. Um, if you're still confused about anything, definitely hit me up in the comments or Instagram DMs at underscore Taylor Louise. But I really do just hope that this helps someone. Like I said, I have been asked so many questions about this over the last few weeks, especially. So I wanted to film this to help everyone out. So if you did enjoy this video, go down below, click like, hit subscribe, hit the bell to be notified every single time I post a brand new video in this mini series, especially, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys. Thank you.